Calgary Police Service continues to investigate following an incident that occurred last weekend. On the evening of Saturday, February 25th, 2017, a woman and some friends went to a Southeast Calgary pub along with an associate who is a maintenance worker at the woman's apartment complex located in the 9900 block of Fairmont Drive Southeast. At the end of the evening, the woman returned to her apartment alone and went to bed. At approximately 3.20 a.m. on Sunday, February 26, 2017, the woman awoke to a man crouching by her bed. She recognized him as the maintenance worker she had invited to the pub. She was frightened and told him to leave immediately. As part of his job, the man had keys to all the buildings within the complex as well as other units. The man left, then left and the woman contacted police. Philip Ellen Skullneck, 38 of Calgary, was charged with break and enter with the intent to commit a sexual assault. He will appear next in court on Monday, March 6, 2017. The Calgary Police Service encourages anyone who feels that they have been a victim of a sexual, sexual assault to report it to police. Any, with, anyone with information about this incident is asked to call the police non-emergency line at 403-266-1234 or Crime Stoppers anonymously. Uh, I think because both are actually, um, because he's the maintenance worker and that she lives at the complex, that there's, there was some form of a, an acquaintance, just professional acquaintance, in his role as the maintenance worker. So they wouldn't have been friends? Friends, acquaintance, um, yeah, I guess so if you want to say friends. I would say more of a professional acquaintance, just because obviously he's doing work in and around the building. No. Is he on your reg uh, registry? Uh, I can't speak to any information involved in the registry. Was he on parole at all, you know? Again, I can't speak to any uh, information with regards to... Uh, but he would have been charged with some sort of breach, I presume. Yeah, and maybe we can discuss that after. Okay, fair enough. Did he have any weapons on this person? Uh, no, at the time of the arrest, there were no weapons on his person. Uh, at this point, we're just going to say that's a, a licensed establishment in the southeast. Near the residence, or can you? Uh, the only thing I can focus on is the fact that it was in the southeast quadrant, and it's not it's not party to the offense. Do you speak at all to how the victim is doing? I mean, obviously, this looks likely a uh, very traumatic experience. Considering what uh, she's gone through, she has a lot of supports, uh, friends, uh, support systems in place. Um, obviously, she was quite shocked by what happened. Uh, we are providing her with victim assistance and we are working with our community partners to provide her additional support that she may need. Can you share any information about what would be required as far as, uh, if you know, um, criminal background checks for key holders in an apartment complex where they're, you know, maintenance work? Well, I can't speak to uh, what processes are in place uh, that, um, you know, professional management companies have in place. Uh, I mean, I'd certainly encourage that uh, if you're going to uh, have someone in a position where they have access to people's uh, dwellings, uh, apartment complexes, that they would do a background check of okay, their employees. Or laws that? I'm unaware of that. Sorry. Uh, any idea of, I mean, obviously she woke up, saw this guy back there. Did he immediately leave the apartment? Was there any sort of conversation uh, at all? Uh, it's Part of details of uh, part of the investigation, uh, there was no physical altercation, but there was a, uh, a conversation, but uh, he left immediately. So it was pretty immediate then? Um, yeah, he left. At yeah. any time did he touch her? Uh, as part of the offense, no. no. I've never heard of that offense before. Right? You can enter with intent to commit a sexual assault? Yes, because uh, after we go through our investigation, uh, we reached out to obviously the Crown Prosecutor um, and in, given the circumstance, uh, it was an appropriate charge to lay at the time. Given, obviously you can't talk about the elephant in the room, but um, <coughs> what made police believe that he intended to sexually assault her? Again, uh, looking at um, the individual involved and in, through the investigation and after a consult with the Crown, we felt that that was an appropriate charge. Uh, you are asking if anybody else has been potentially assaulted by this person that is well, why I think in particular for this one you're 
do you think there's people out there? There's no evidence to say that uh, there are other um, victims out there, uh, but you know we always encourage victims of sexual assault to come forward at any at, at any time to report. Have you gotten in contact with all the other uh, people inside the building? So as part of the investigation, we will certainly reach out to uh, uh, the individuals and uh, work with the management company um, for that. Are you aware of any police services were ever monitoring him in the last three or so years? And I can't speak to uh, any other police service with whether they're monitoring him or not.